Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're going to talk about OT cybersecurity, its importance, key terminologies and definitions, the architecture of a typical ICS system, its implementation, the required skills, the different roles and jobs in OT cybersecurity, and finally, some famous certifications and their importance. So let's dive right in, but before that, I would like to remind you that if you find value in our videos, hit the like button, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out the valuable knowledge I'm here to deliver. To begin with, let's understand what OT cybersecurity is. OT stands for Operational Technology, which refers to systems and networks used to monitor and control physical processes in industries like manufacturing, energy, transportation, and more. OT cybersecurity focuses on protecting these critical infrastructure systems from cyber threats and ensuring their reliability, safety, and availability. Now, why is OT cybersecurity so important? Well, as industries become more digitized and interconnected, the risk of cyber attacks targeting these operational systems increases. A successful attack on an OT system can have severe consequences such as operational disruptions, safety hazards, environmental damage, and financial losses. Therefore, it is crucial to have robust OT cybersecurity measures in place to safeguard these critical infrastructure systems. Before we proceed further, let's familiarize ourselves with some important terminologies and definitions in the world of OT cybersecurity. Understanding these terms will help us navigate the complexities of this field more effectively. Number 1. ICS – Industrial Control System A collection of hardware, software, and network technologies used to control and monitor industrial processes. It encompasses various systems like SCADA, PLC, DCS, and more. Number 2. SCADA – Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition a type of ICS that gathers and analyzes real-time data from remote devices, allowing operators to monitor and control industrial processes from a centralized location. Number 3. PLC – Programmable Logic Controller A ruggedized, computerized device used to automate and control electromechanical processes. It receives input from sensors and executes programmed logic to control machinery or processes. Number 4. DCS Distributed Control System A centralized system that manages and controls multiple processes or machines across a distributed network. It provides supervisory control and real-time monitoring capabilities. Number 5. HMI – Human-Machine Interface A graphical interface that allows operators to interact with and control industrial systems. It provides a visual representation of the process and enables users to monitor and adjust parameters. Number 6. IT – Information Technology The technology and systems used for information processing, storage and communication in business and administrative functions. Number 7. Threat Vect A specific pathway or method through which a cyber attack can be launched against a system or network. It could be through physical or digital means. Number 8. Vulnerability A weakness or flaw in a system or network that can be exploited by attackers to gain unauthorized access, disrupt operations, or compromise data integrity. Number 9. Compliance Standards Industry-specific regulations or guidelines that organizations must adhere to in order to ensure the security and privacy of their OT systems. Number 10. Intrusion Detection System IDS, A security tool or software that monitors network traffic and detects potential malicious activities or unauthorized access attempts. These definitions should provide you with a good starting point to understand the key terminologies in the field of OT cybersecurity. Now that we have a good grasp of the key terminologies, let's take a closer look at the architecture of a typical ICS system. Understanding the components and their interactions will provide us with valuable insights into how OT cybersecurity measures should be implemented. First, let's delve into the components of a typical ICS industrial control system and discuss their functions and the flow of information and control between them. Sensors. Sensors are devices that collect data from the physical environment. In an ICS, 
sensors monitor various parameters such as temperature, pressure, flow rates, and other relevant variables. Controllers Controllers are responsible for processing the data received from sensors and making decisions based on predefined logic or algorithms. Actuators Actuators are devices that convert control signals from controllers into physical actions or changes in the environment. They can be motors, valves, pumps, switches, or any other devices that can physically manipulate the industrial process being controlled. Communication networks Communication networks facilitate the exchange of data and commands between different components of an ICS. These networks can be wired, such as Ethernet, or field bus, or wireless, such as Wi, Fi or cellular networks. They enable sensors, controllers, and other devices to transmit and receive data in real time, forming a networked infrastructure for control and monitoring. Human Machine Interface, HMI. The HMI is the interface through which human operators interact with the ICS. It provides a graphical representation of the industrial processes, real-time data visualization, and control options. In an ICS, the flow of information and control follows a structured path. Sensors continuously gather data from the physical environment and transmit it to the controllers. The controllers process this data using predefined algorithms and make decisions based on the desired control objectives. These decisions are then communicated to the actuators, which execute physical actions to adjust the industrial process. Simultaneously, the controllers send data and status information to the HMI, providing operators with real-time insights into the system's performance. Operators can interact with the HMI to monitor the system, set parameters, or initiate specific actions. Any changes made by the operators are transmitted back to the controllers, which adapt their control strategies accordingly. Now let's learn how to implement OT cybersecurity. Implementing OUT cybersecurity requires a systematic approach. Let's explore the steps involved in securing an OT environment. Number one, risk assessment. Risk assessment is the process of identifying, analyzing, and evaluating potential risks and vulnerabilities within an OT system it involves assessing the likelihood and potential impact of various threats to the system's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This step helps prioritize security measures and allocate resources effectively. Number two, network segmentation. Network segmentation involves dividing the OT network into smaller, isolated segments to enhance security. By separating the network into logical or physical segments, the impact of a security breach can be contained, preventing unauthorized lateral movement. Each segment can have its own security controls and access restrictions, limiting the potential damage caused by an attack. Number 3. Access Control Access control refers to the implementation of mechanisms and policies to regulate and control user access to the OT system this involves assigning appropriate user roles and permissions, implementing strong authentication mechanisms, such as multi-factor authentication, and regularly reviewing and revoking access rights when necessary. Access control helps prevent unauthorized access and limits the potential for insider threats. Number four, vulnerability management. Vulnerability management involves identifying, assessing, and remediating vulnerabilities in the OT system. This includes regular scanning and testing for vulnerabilities, patching and updating systems and software, and monitoring vendor security advisories. By proactively addressing vulnerabilities, organizations can reduce the likelihood of successful attacks, targeting known weaknesses. Number five, incident response planning. Incident response planning involves developing a documented and well-defined strategy to respond effectively to cybersecurity incidents. This includes establishing incident response teams, defining roles and responsibilities, documenting procedures for detecting, analyzing, containing, eradicating, and recovering from security incidents. Incident response plans ensure a timely and organized response to minimize the impact of an incident. Number six, continuous monitoring. Continuous monitoring involves the ongoing surveillance of the OT system's security posture. This includes real-time monitoring of network traffic, system logs, and security events to detect anomalies, 
potential intrusions, or unauthorized activities. Continuous monitoring also involves regular security assessments, penetration testing, and vulnerability scanning to identify emerging threats and vulnerabilities. By following these key steps, organizations can establish a strong foundation for OT cybersecurity. Together, these steps contribute to a proactive and robust OT cybersecurity strategy. Now that we understand the implementation process, what skills are necessary to excel in the field of OT cybersecurity? OT cybersecurity professionals should possess skills in control systems, network security, vulnerability assessment incident response, knowledge of industrial protocols, risk management, and familiarity with relevant compliance standards. These skills are essential in safeguarding critical infrastructure systems and ensuring the resilience and reliability of operational technology environments. The field of OT cybersecurity offers a range of exciting career opportunities. Roles such as OT security analyst, OT security engineer, incident responder, OT security architect, OT cybersecurity manager, OT cybersecurity consultant, and compliance specialist are in high demand. These professionals play critical roles in securing industrial systems and protecting critical infrastructure. People obtain certifications in OT cybersecurity for industry recognition, skills and knowledge validation, career advancement, client confidence and professional development. Some of the popular certifications are GICSP, Global Industrial Cybersecurity Professional, OSCP, Offensive Security Certified Professional, CISSP, Certified Information Systems Security Professional, CSSA, Certified SCADA Security Architect, ISA and IEC 62443 certifications. These certifications demonstrate expertise and enhance career prospects in the field of OT cybersecurity. Remember, Staying updated with the latest trends, obtaining relevant certifications, and continuously honing your skills will help you thrive in the ever-evolving OT cybersecurity landscape. Thank you for joining us, and we wish you success in your OT cybersecurity career journey. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.